This time on the show, cracking every standard Windows password in less than six hours with a massive GPU cluster, building a home theater PC for around $300, and blinking lights! All that and more this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I am Shannon Morris. It's your weekly dose of Technoloss. Merry Christmas! It's a holiday happy show. Where's your Santa hat? What? I thought you were wearing that one this week. No, I no. don't have a Santa hat. You was I supposed to have a Santa hat? You, I think so. Oh. Yeah, you were supposed to. And I was going to wear my bad sweater. Awkward. Yeah. Uh, but well, that's okay, because you know what? the show anyway, right? I am so stoked. What are you stoked about? Uh, about this right here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I am so excited. What's going this on with freaking, that? This freaking, um, you know that home theater PC that I've kept on talking about for like half a year? Sure, sure. Finally doing it. Yay! I'm building the crap out of that thing. Good. Well, I'm I'm stoked about that because you know, it's important. Yeah. To get your media on, and it's important to get it on the way that you want it. And yes, I love exactly. the idea of like, there's all these different boxes. There's all these different cool things you can do. Like, you know, you've got your Roku's and your help me out here. Some other ones. <laughs> Google TV, Google Roku. There's the Apple TV. There's the Xbox 360 that you can do like the media. Well, I guess all with. of the consoles at this point. But yeah, yeah I but mean, none of them are perfectly what I want. So I'm just making my own. I was like, screw I it. I'm so down with that. Yep. So I guess we haven't done this on the show in like years. So I know. it's great to uh, get into it. I'm stoked that uh, you're diving into this. And um, so we, we also have a really cool segment for the holidays. Yeah, you had an interview, didn't you? Uh-huh, a little, a little holiday uh, password cracking action, Ooh, huh? Ooh, that's going to be good. Yeah, so get this. Password uh, cracking. It's what actually kind of password it's, cracking? Uh, well, GPU-enabled password cracking. So using graphics cards uh, to you know harness the this very specialized computing power of those guys in parallel, like lots of graphics cards, mm -hmm. 25 in this case, to uh, to take advantage to basically brute force those one-way hash functions that we're always talking about. Oh. You know, your your MD5s and mm -hmm. your SHA1s, your NTLMs for Windows, all of those ways, all those um, ways in which passwords are stored in databases. Right, which uh, we went over in uh, oh. several. Was that several seasons ago? We've, we've talked about them plenty, and we've talked about the merits of salting passwords and things yeah. of that nature. And uh, this is, uh, and, and we've got a great interview with Jeremy Gosme, because he's built a massive password cracking GPU cluster. I got a chance to talk to him uh, about the latest in password cracking technology. And so Gosme, if you're not familiar, is the CEO of Strict Consulting Group. And they recently showed off their latest cracking rig over at the Password 12 conference in Norway. This rig, get this, 25 AMD Radeon graphics cards. It's able to bust every single possible eight character Ed TLM hash in about five and a half hours. And that's the hash that's been used in Windows since two, server 2003. It replaces that ridiculously weak LM hash, which is, I guess, the password hashing equivalent of like WEP. It's <laughs> kind of a joke. Yeah. Yeah. I'm stoked about this. His rig is super unique in that it uses VCL virtualization. So that is a way for a single controller to communicate with multiple machines, all just jam packed Ooh. with GPUs. And then he uses Hashcat Plus to make those rigs uh, just really churn out a whole bunch of hashes. So in this case, NTLM, he's able to do 350 billion attempts per second. For SHA-1, that's 63 billion oh, attempts per second. And uh, even for like um, MD5, we're talking about 180 attempts, uh, 180 billion attempts per second. Now, Bcrypt and SHA-512 crypt, those safer for now. Which is a lot of safer for now, 71,000 and 364,000 respectively. So not in the billions yet, which is pretty cool. So if you haven't, go ahead and make your pa password more complex. And for the <laughs> love of God, stop using the same one on every site. Yeah. Um, but at this point, I think we should just go ahead and throw it over to Jeremy, because this is kind of a long interview and we really geek out about the nitty gritty. Cool. Let's check it out. If you're setting up a website to start a new business, showcase your portfolio, publish a blog, Domain.com is the best place to go for your next great idea. Need a new domain name? Well, consider getting yourself a .com. A .com name is the original. We all know it. It's the best. It's globally understood. It's recognized everywhere. No matter what you choose, it's going to lend credibility to your content. Plus, if you're into investing in like buying and selling domains, you've got the highest aftermarket value. And you can find a .com name over at 
Domain.com. Jen and I love them because they are so affordable and reliable and easy to use. Plus, Domain.com has such an active social media presence on Twitter, at Domain.com, and great customer service. It makes it a really fun place to do business. And get this, they're huge fans of Hack5, and they want to hook you up so you can get 15% off their already affordable domain names and web hosting. All you have to do is use the coupon code HAK5 at Domain.com's checkout. That's 15% off and big savings, so don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Uh, so what brought you to Hashcat and uh, what role do you play in that project? Um, so I've been using Hashcat for about two years. Um, I've been into password cracking for about 10, 13 years now. Um, and um, with the advent of GPU password cracking, there really is no other alternative aside from Hashcat. Um, most of the other GPU crackers out there just don't have the maturity or the speed or the um, flexibility of, you know, the Hashcat provides. Um, I'm not active with the development of Hashcat. Um, actually, it's only being developed by one person right now, and that's Adam. Um, so I'm more of, a, I guess you would say, kind of a community leader. I'm one of the few, um, you know, senior moderators, like on the Hashcat forums and stuff. So I guess you can say, like, I'm a Hashcat power user, and uh, I assist Adam with... Uh, Things like the the website wiki development. Um, I was responsible for adding uh, virtual OpenCL clustering to Hashcat recently. Um, when I say I'm responsible for that, I mean I poked Adam and was like, "Hey, have you seen VCL? You should add this." <laughs> so, uh, which I'll be presenting a talk on um, Hashcat clustering with virtual OpenCL at the Passwords 12 Security Conference in Norway next month. Oh, nice! Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Well, yeah. uh, tell me about your cluster. What's the, uh, what's the rig and uh, what does it take to put something like that together? So our current rig consists of 10 uh, Radeon 7970s, three 6990s, um, four 5970s, and a 5870 throwing just in there for fun. Um, the cluster is pretty large. It's cost about uh, a little bit over 30 grand at this point. Um, and it's mostly just we use the funds, you know, it's, it's, it's corporate backed, you know, by my LLC. So I didn't have to pay for all this out of pocket, but it was, uh, you know, mostly the money that we have left over from our embedded Linux development efforts. We spun into this cluster and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it runs uh, Hashcat and virtual CL to, as an abstraction layer. So basically we have this virtual machine out there that has no GPUs on it. It just acts like, um, as a, uh, sort of like a head unit you know, the cluster manager. And it has Hashcat installed and a virtual CL broker. And then all the GPU nodes just have the virtual CL um, to open CL daemon on it so that virtual CL can well, to the individual cluster nodes. And then we just kick off Hashcat jobs from the, uh, from the broker node and it just kicks it out to all these different GPUs. And, you know, there's like, because um, a lot of those are dual GPU cards that I mentioned. So I think right now in the cluster we have like 20 something you know, GPUs available for hash tracking. And so how many uh, physical boxes and how are those guys networked? So right now there are five physical boxes, although one of those is an open air chassis. It's not really a box. It's, uh, I, uh, I got a picture of it here on Twitter. I actually just got in trouble by the data center for having this because they're concerned that it's an uncontained unit. Um, I'm going to link you to this picture real quick. But this was basically a hack job that I did with some uh, aluminum angle iron. And uh, so, yeah, that picture there, that's basically, basically just a hack job that I did with a rack mounted shelf, some aluminum angle iron, and uh, some cutting and drilling. And uh, yeah, as you can see that there, the data center got mad about that. <laughs> nice. This, Unit. Yeah, so I just got this shelf sitting there with some GPUs hanging off of some aluminum angle iron bolted up directly to the rack. Um, but the other boxes are just, you know, regular 4U servers. Um, send you another picture here. Well, actually, you can just click to the next picture and see the uh, 8x7970 box there. This box here costs about 10 grand to build. That is just amazing. And so you just use Hashcat for this, how does that stack up against things like Pirate and some of those other uh, ones that I can't pronounce? Uh, so Pirate or Pirate, however you want to pronounce it. Um, Hashcat is two to three times faster um, than using the pre-computed tables with uh, Pirate or Pirate, however you want to pronounce that. Um, but, you know, Pirate only does WPA, it doesn't do any other algorithm, right? Hashcat supports um, between CPU Hashcat, Hashcat Plus, and Hashcat Lite. 
Um, I think it supports 70 algorithms altogether. So um, we definitely have the flexibility there. And why uh, ATI over NVIDIA? That's kind of a complicated question. Um, the short answer is uh, NVIDIA and CUDA suck for hash cracking, and that's largely just due to uh, NVIDIA's architecture. Um, what it comes down to is hash cracking benefits from GPGPU through massively parallel computations, right? And uh, right now, ATI or AMD cards um, have more stream processors available to do those parallel computations. And not only that, but um, NVIDIA kind of hides the um, direct access to the traders and the stream process behind um, their compute units. With AMD and ATI, you have direct access to those stream processors. So there's no abstraction going on there. Um, if you think of it like as GPUs or like workers, um, with ATI, you have more workers available that run at slightly slower clocks. With AMD, or sorry, with NVIDIA cards, you have less workers available that run at higher clocks. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Uh, there's other architectural differences as well um, that might be getting a little bit too technical. Um, NVIDIA has a much better memory controller than AMD cards, but hash cracking doesn't use very much memory. And um, the memory that you do use um, is usually localized to uh, each GPU, like the local memory on each GPU. You can think of it kind of like an L2 cache, I suppose. Um, <coughs> but yeah, memory, memory um, speed and the amount of memory available on the cards are rather insignificant, especially if you're talking about brute force. Brute force uses almost no memory whatsoever. So does that mean that you get to get away with buying a cheaper card? 